spirits that are specifically assigned to a community, to a people, to a family, to a city, to a nation, and to a church. There are certain churches in certain communities that have been there for years and struggle to break through in numbers, and there are other churches in the same community that just grows overnight. Now, the difference between those two churches is that one church is a prophetic church that has a mandate from God to affect and to change the community. Another church don't have anything that scares the devil. So he doesn't care about that church growing as long as it doesn't do damage to his kingdom, he will allow you to grow and put pressure on another church because he knows the potential of that house. That if that house breaks forth, it will stop everything and get him out of the community and put him out of business. And so what he does is he will say, okay, listen, you really don't have to worry about these folks. We have them under our hands already. We've already conquered them. They ain't going nowhere. And so let's put all pressure on those people because that guy over there has a potential. If we let him loose, we'll be in trouble. So just concentrate on that one. Everybody say the promise. Uh, say, I have a promise. Say, I'm born with a promise. So if a church has a promise to change a community, to bring a revival to a community, you become a target of Satan. And, and if we joke with it, he can literally stop whatever our assignment is because what he does is to ensure that he assigns his master spirits to foster the vision of that house so the promise never comes to pass. Are you hearing me, somebody? The fight is over the promise. It's not about you. It's about the promise. Are you hearing me? That's why you've been through the things you've been through. Is anybody hearing me? Satan is not just interested in you. He's interested in the promise for which you were born. He's interested in the promise of the house. Is anybody hearing me? Now don't look at me with that look. I came to help you. Somebody say yes. yes. Hallelujah. Even the attitude of people in church, when you see the way folks sit down and they respond, it tells you what is working behind the scenes. Did you hear what I said? It just tells you what is working behind the scenes. There are things that are responsible for people's way of thinking, thought pattern, belief systems, and attitudes, and way of life. There are influences. There are powers behind the scenes. And unless we recognize what we're dealing with, that what we're dealing with is not just folks. It's not just the attitude of folks. It's not just flesh and blood. It's not just the community. But we are dealing with unseen beings. There are master spirits, ruling spirits in the community that are responsible for the drug dealings and uh, the, the drug uh, trafficking and the violence and the poverty uh, and the breakdown of law and order. There is a reason why so many of our sons are in prison. We're dealing with things that the eyes can't see. And if you're just looking at things from the natural perspective, you are in big trouble. Are you hearing me, somebody? You got to stop looking at things from the natural perspective. If you are in the ministry today and you are looking at ministry just from the natural perspective, looking at it from protocol, from system perspective, you are in big trouble because this is not about flesh and blood. The Bible said we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but we do wrestle with principalities. And the word principality means a prince. So we're dealing with the princes of darkness. The Bible talks about prince. It talks about principalities. It talks about thrones. It talks about dominions. And it talks about powers. What is a principality? A principality means a prince. What is the dominion? The dominion means a domain of the prince. A domain of the prince could be a, a geographical location or a region, a territory, a community, a city, a nation. Dominion. That is the domain. The domain of the prince. Say a prince. 
Say dominion means domain. Then he talks about the throne. The throne means the office or the seat of the prince. Then he talks about power, the ability of the prince to make legislations. The throne of iniquity. The enemy has power. Behold, I give unto you power over all the powers of the enemy. And nothing shall by any means hurt you. Are you hearing me, somebody? So, we're dealing with forces which are unseen and responsible for most of the things we go through that we can't explain. And the real enemy is not the one you think is the enemy. The real enemy is not your father-in-law or your mother-in-law. Are you hearing me? The, drug, the real enemy is not the drug pushers in the community. The real enemy is unseen. And it works through man. The Lord said to me the other day, he said, son, I want you to be angry. I want you to, I want you to be mad. And I said, why? He said, because until you are sick and tired of what the devil is doing to my people, you will never do what you have to do. So he said, I want you to be mad and go get my people angry. And my assignment is to provoke you and get you angry, get you mad. Are you hearing me, somebody? And you stop looking at things from the natural perspective because there are so many things going on. The other day, let me demonstrate it. Sir, come. Sir, come. I'm going to show you something. You said I can talk to you, so let me do this. Sir, I want you to stand this way, face this way. Thank you. Face it. No. Behind it. Now, this is what I want you to do. I want you to to try to whisper into his ears and begin to play with his mind, with your fingers. Let's do something like this, you know? And whatever you're doing is, you are suggesting, you are whispering, you're having impact and effect on him, okay? Now, he's going to be working on you, speaking into your ears, whispering, and, I, and he's, the, he's Satan, you are Peter, I'm Jesus, okay? I'm going to the cross. He don't want me to go to the cross, but he has no access to reach me. He can't get to me. Now, the only way he can get to me is you because you are close to me. So he's going to use you as a point of contact to reach me. So he's going to be behind your actions, okay? So I want you to begin to try and hold me back, not to go to the cross. And you are responding to everything he's doing. So you begin to speak to, to him, work on him, and I'm going to the cross to lay down my life, to be crucified, to share my blood, and, and Satan is working through Peter and Peter is working on me and I'm getting agitated and saying, Peter, why are you doing this? Don't do me that. So I turn around to rebuke Peter. When I turn around to rebuke Peter, who do I see? Satan. So I go past Peter and Jesus said, Satan, get thee behind me. Are you hearing me, somebody? Say, I hear you. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Sit down. Thank you. Can I talk to you? Yes, sir. You got to understand some few things here. Number one, you got to understand this. It's illegal for God to do anything for humanity without one being invited by humanity. And the only way we invite God and bring God on the scene is through prayer, intercession. Outside of intercession and prayer, watch this carefully. It is prayer that gives God the legal rights to come to the planet to work on man's behalf or for man. Now, until someone prays, God is limited and restricted to what he can do for humanity. Even though God is sovereign, he still cannot violate the rules he set up. Why? The earth is the Lord, the fullness thereof, and all that is therein is his. But watch this. God gave the earth and the rule of the earth to man. Are you hearing me, somebody? Now, man became the governor of the earth, the ruler of the planet. Now, man, by treason, gave the rule of the earth to Satan. Now, the gifts and callings of God are without repentance. Are you hearing me, somebody? Now, God gave it. To man, man gave it to the devil. Now you remember in the book of Matthew, the fourth chapter, when Satan, watch this, 
When Satan took Jesus to a high mountain, he said to him, he said, if you will bow, and the word bow means if you compromise, the glory and the riches of the world which you see was delivered unto me and to whomsoever I will, I give it. Are you hearing me, somebody? So you got to watch riches and glory because the devil can also give riches and the devil can also give glory. It means the devil can make you great if you compromise your mission. If you compromise your conviction, he can make you great. Are you hearing me, somebody? Yeah. Now watch this. Watch this. You got to look at this very carefully because if you don't understand this, the legalities and the technicalities of the ordinance, then you will not appreciate. You will pray without revelation and you will pray without passion and you will pray without results. So let me explain this to you. Let me go further. Watch this. One of the reasons why Jesus had to be born, the legal entry to the planet Earth is the womb of a woman. You can't come to the earth unless you come through the womb of a woman. And that's why God himself had to wrap himself in the womb of a virgin in order for him to gain access to earth to help humanity. Without coming through the womb of a woman, he couldn't come to earth to help humanity. And the Bible said, for God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself. So God needed a body. He needed a holy body. He needed a body that was anointed and was consecrated to him that he could wrap himself in that body among men in order to help humanity and to fulfill his mandate. For humanity and the only way he could do it was to find a body and the only way that body could be among men could come among men that body had to be conceived in the womb of a woman and must be born in order to come to the earth legally through the legal entry to the earth body to be able to operate on earth satan needs a body so without you, without me, without bishop, God can do anything for humanity. And without human bodies, Satan cannot also work among humanity. So God needs your body, Satan needs your body. And to whomsoever you yield your members or your body, you got it now. So when I submit myself to God, God then has authority to operate through my body and through my spirit and my soul to help humanity. The Bible said, for God, how God anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. So God was doing good through Jesus. The devil was also oppressing people. Are you hearing me, somebody? Now watch this. The man of the Gadarenes, when Jesus cast out the demons, the legions, which was 6,000 demons embedded in him, 3,000 footmen and 3,000 horsemen. So 6,000 spirits were embedded in him. Hear what the demons said. They said, cast us out, but don't send us out of this region. You remember that? Mark chapter 5, the 10th verse, they pleaded with Jesus and said, don't send us out of this region. What does that mean? It means that spirits are territorial and there are spirits that have lived in a particular region or community for centuries, for years, for generations. And they are used to that area and watch this, demons don't know what is on your mind. They can't read your mind, they have to learn you, they have to study you. And the reason why they didn't want to leave that particular region was because if they were sent out of that region into a new region, it takes them time to learn the people, to begin to gain and to have access to those people, to begin to mess them up. But in this region, they've ruled this region. They live in this region. They possess people who are dead and gone and they are still controlling their children and their great-grandchildren. So they are used to this particular region and the people here. So they said, leave us alone we want to stay and remain in this region so you're dealing with some stuff 
and there are things you are dealing with that eyes cannot see. Jesus said to the disciples the other day, he said, who do men say that I am? So the disciples answered, some say you are John the Baptist and Elias and uh, you are one of the old prophets risen from the dead and Jeremiah and they went on telling them man's opinion of who he is. Jesus said, that is man's perception of me. That is the limited man. How they see me. Jesus said, now you that are with me, who do you say that I am? Tell me of your perception of me. Everybody was quiet. They were confused. They didn't even know who he was. Then suddenly Peter said, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. Then Jesus said, you got it now. Jesus said, Peter, flesh and blood has not revealed this unto you, but my father, which is in heaven. Now watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Every one of them saw him differently. They said he was one of the old prophets, but he wasn't. And you see, unless you are in the spirit, unless you have revelation, you will not even know who you are sitting next to. And you don't even know who your brother is. You don't even know who your sister is. Some of you don't even know who your parents are in the spirit. Are you hearing me? There are parents who don't even know who their kids are. When the prophet went to the house of Jesse to anoint a king, you got to watch this. He got in there and the true king was at the backside of the desert. And the prophet almost missed it. He was going to anoint just somebody else who was in God's choice. And God said, hold it there, prophet. None of these are qualified. The real one who has the anointing and the scepter of kinship is at the backside of the desert. So send for him. What am I saying? The Bible says, for eyes have not seen nor ears heard, neither has entered the hands of man. What God has already planned for those who love him. Is there anybody in this house who love God? Come on somebody, you love the Lord? My God, look at somebody next to you and say, you don't know who I am. Look at someone else and say, you think you know me, but you don't know me. Watch this. Watch this. Look at me. Jesus said, he said what? Flesh and blood. Say flesh and blood. Everybody say flesh and blood. He said flesh and blood has not revealed this unto you, but my father which is in heaven. It means that folks, there are things that you will never know till you die as long as you depend on flesh and blood. Peter would have never known the true person of Christ until he was connected. And, and watch this, watch this. The only reason why Peter caught the revelation of who Jesus truly was by revelation and by the spirit and it wasn't any of the apostles but Peter was because Jesus interceded for him. Now watch this. The other day Jesus said, Peter, Satan have desired you to shift you as wheat, but I interceded for you. And he said, when thou art converted, strengthen your brethren. Now watch this. Peter being the leader had to know what the others don't know. He must have revelation in order for him to lead because the blind don't lead the blind. So Jesus had to intercede for Peter in advance and say, Father, he is the leader. He is the guy. He is the one that will lead them. He is the leader among them all. So he got to know something the others don't know to be able to lead them, to be able to guide them. So give him a revelation of who I am because unless he, the leader, knows what the others don't know, he will follow the others like blind like everybody else oh god i wish somebody's hearing me watch this listen to what jesus said watch this jesus said he said thou art peter uh-huh watch this he said thou art peter he said simon the word simon means unstable as water Simon 
means unstable as water. And no stability. Revelation makes you stable. Revelation gives you ability to be steadfast and unmovable. Folks with revelation, you can easily move them. They are not easily moved by what they hear, by what folks say. People with revelation are stable. In the midst of storm, they stand. It doesn't matter what trial comes their way. They are stable. Ah, Their heart is set and fixed on the Lord. They set their face like a flame. Nothing moves them. It takes revelation to stand when everybody is going under. It takes revelation to lift up your heads above the waters of life. It takes revelation when everybody is down for you to stand up. It takes revelation when everybody writes you up and said you are finished to see you still going on it takes revelation somebody shout revelation now watch this watch this Jesus said Simon son of Jonah your name will no more be Simon but what? Peter the, word, the, the, the meaning of Peter is a rock revelation stability watch this Watch this. He said, and unto you, not to everybody, but to you, will I give the keys of the kingdom of heaven. The keys of. Not the keys into, but the keys of. Of the kingdom. That means you have keys that will allow you to open many, many, many doors of the kingdom. Because in the kingdom there are many doors and there are many mountains in the kingdom. So you need keys to be able to access are you hearing me? Not just one thing, but because when you get born again, salvation means just more than being saved. Salvation is in three dimensions. Being saved. Are you hearing me? There is what we call instant salvation, continuous salvation and final salvation. When you got saved, your spirit got saved and your soul is being saved by the renewing of your mind and your body shall be saved when Jesus comes again. Now hear me carefully. There are so many of you sitting here under the sound of my voice looking at me some way. You got so many issues that you're trying to use your mind and you've been trying everything to fix it, to solve it. There are certain things you're talking about it don't solve it. Demons don't go by talking to them and, and negotiating. I don't negotiate with demons. I deal with them. Are you hearing me, somebody? You don't cancel demons. There are certain situations you don't need a counseling. Demons need to be cast out. And, and demons don't obey unless you have authority. Watch this. I'm trying to provoke you. And then I'll give you one or two scriptures that will make you mad. Because unless you are sick and tired of the devil messing with you, you will never rise up to the occasion. Somebody got to go home and tell the devil, this is, this is the end of it. You get out of this house. You have no authority in this place anymore. You take your hands off my kids in the name of Jesus. You get out of here. Take your hands off my finances. Are you hearing me, somebody? Unless somebody puts up a fight and is willing to die for what you believe for, you will never see a change. And you are my folks. I am your brother you left at the other side of the mighty oceans. Are you hearing me, somebody? They got all of you, but they couldn't get me. Because I was a fighter. I fought them and they couldn't get me and they got you. And I have come to find you. Are you hearing me, somebody? Now watch this. Watch this carefully. You, if you don't get what I'm saying... It doesn't matter how much preaching you get. So oh, he was so powerful. Ooh, powerful. That is not what changes things. How powerful I preach don't help you. Are you hearing me? You know what helps you? What helps you is what when you catch the revelation and you are you yourself become powerful like me because of revelation and you can deal with the devil without me are you hearing me somebody then you got it not when i preach powerful but when you become powerful on your own by revelation 
when what I say empowers you to become powerful like me to be able to deal with the enemy on your own and you don't need my help and it doesn't matter what time the devil knocks at your door you can wake up and say who is there and you open your door and see the devil and you shut the door back at him and tell him wrong address I'm going to sleep are you hearing me somebody go somewhere else when the devil try to fool with you or your kids, you tell the devil, not this one, not this one. Are you hearing me, somebody? Not this one and not this time around. Somebody say, not this one, not this one. And say, not this time around. You fooled with me the other day, but not this time around. Jesus said, Peter, because you just caught a revelation. Somebody say, revelation. Somebody say advanced knowledge. Somebody say advanced knowledge. Somebody say laser discernment. Say laser discernment. Say advanced knowledge. That is what the church needs. With advanced knowledge, you beat the enemy. Jesus said, because you have advanced knowledge, to you, not the others, but you, check your Bible. He said, you, I will give what? The keys of the kingdom of heaven. Then he said, whatsoever you bind on the earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever you lose on earth shall be loose in heaven. Now watch this. Watch this. In the original rendering and in the Greek, that translation is wrong. It's wrong. It is upside down. What it reads in the Greek is whatsoever you bind on earth which is already bound in heaven shall be sanctioned. That means you bind from a heavenly perspective, not from an earth perspective. I'll say it again. You bind what is already bound in heaven, on the earth. Jesus said, I see my father work and I work. Do you get a revelation there? Now watch this. How do you know what is bound in heaven if you don't have the ability to access heaven? How do you know what is loose in heaven if you don't have the ability to tap into the mind of God? How do you know what is bound in heaven if you don't operate in revelation? If you don't know how to buy into the mind of God and to download what is on his mind, you can know what is up in heaven. In order for you to buy what heaven has already bound, you got to be able to walk in revelation. Say revelation. revelation. That means heaven binds and earth enforces. Right, right, right. Are you hearing me, somebody? So the father says, I have loose this brother a million dollars, and I need an intercessor to enforce on earth what is already done in heaven. Are you hearing me, somebody? Yes. Watch this. Jesus said, Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it was already what? Done in heaven. So it's already sanctioned in heaven. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on the earth as it's already what? Done in heaven. So Jesus said there is a verdict already. It is a judicial decision. It's been decided that you should be favored. But God said heaven has decided it but Earth needs to enforce it. How can you enforce what heaven have decided if you don't have revelation and you don't know what heaven have decided? Yeah. Somebody say revelation. revelation. Oh, talk to me. Somebody say revelation. revelation. Say it again. Somebody say revelation. revelation. Church, let me talk to you. The day we live in is a day. Watch this. Without the Holy Spirit and without revelation, we will pray wrong, amiss. 
We'll be dealing with things that won't move anything. We'll be at the wrong place at the right time. We'll be doing the right thing at the wrong time. We'll be with the right people at the wrong time. Because if you have to meet Bishop tomorrow, according to the predetermined counsel of God, according to the judicial determination of eternity, according to that which is written in the volume of the book, according to executive determination of eternity, if you have to meet Bishop tomorrow, to effect a particular desire of heaven. And you meet him today. You've met the right person at the wrong time. Are you hearing me somebody? So nothing is going to happen. And meeting him at the wrong time could mess things up when the right time comes. And what the devil tries to do is to give you premature exposure. The devil knows where you are going. So he tries to set you up to mess you up before you get there. So when you get there, because you've been there before at the wrong time and you messed up, when you go back at the right time, folks don't want to hear you. Somebody say revelation. Watch this. The serpent comes into the garden. Talks to the woman. Adam was comfortable. Why? Watch this. The reason why the man was comfortable with the serpent was because Adam named every beast of the field. And they lived with them. They talked. They talked. They communicated. So when the serpent was talking to the woman, Adam was in discernment. He didn't know what was going on. But it wasn't the snake that was speaking. It was someone else that was speaking through the snake. Why? Because watch this. The Bible said that the snake was the most subtle right, right. beast of the field. The most subtle. So what did the devil do? The devil deployed the skill of the snake to misguide and to mislead Adam and Eve. And they didn't know what they were speaking to. Watch this. Sometime, sometime you can be speaking to the enemy and without revelation you won't even know who you are speaking to. And there are so many of you speaking to the enemy and you don't even know you are speaking to the enemy. Because Joseph was speaking to the enemy and he thought he was speaking to his brethren. Watch this. The Bible said, and Jesus answered the fig tree. Another translation said, and Jesus responded to the fig tree. What does that mean? It means that if he responded and if he answered, then it's an indication that the fig tree said something. And the Bible never told us what the fig tree said. But it said something for him to would have answered and responded. But it means it said something. But yet he didn't say anything. What does that mean? It means there are things that are speaking to you and yet they haven't said anything. Can I talk to you? Yeah. Women, for instance, don't have to open their mouth in order for them to say something. Women have many languages. They have many ways of talking. They have the eye language. They can talk through their eyes. They have the body language. They can talk through their body. They have the mood language. They speak through their mood. Are you hearing me, somebody? A man can be standing with a wife 
full of the Holy Ghost, very anointed. And another woman comes talking to the man and have her eyes on the man and the man can't tell what's going on. But the woman knows, her wife knows, the wife knows exactly what's going on. So the wife don't have to say anything with her mouth. She just has to send a message to the other woman with the eyes and her body language and say, don't even try it. This is mine. This is for time and eternity. It's mine. Stay on your side of the line. And immediately the woman just said, hey, okay, I'll see you all later. And the husband turns to the wife and says, what did you do to her? And the, husband, the wife says, nothing. Let's go home. Let's go. Let's go home. Are you hearing me, somebody? What am I saying here? There are things that are speaking to you that haven't said anything. Now, how do you know what is speaking to you? Say, Revelation. Gee, watch this. The Bible says, let him that have ears to hear, hear. So what is he saying? It means that you can have ears and not hear. Jesus heard what the fig tree said, but none of the disciples heard it. So you can have ears and not hear what the enemy is saying. Then Jesus says, eyes have they, but they see not. That means you can have eyes and yet not see. Turn your Bibles to Psalm 13 and verse 3. Psalm 13 and verse 3. Look at something there. Am I talking to somebody? Psalm 13 and verse 3. Look at it. Consider, O oh Lord, and hear me, O oh Lord God. Lighten my eyes, lest I what? I want everybody to read it at least two times. One to go. Consider and hear me, O Lord my God. Lighten my eyes, lest I sleep the sleep of death. Again. Consider and hear me, O Lord my God. Lighten my eyes, lest I sleep the sleep of death. Lest my enemies say, I have prevailed against them. Mm -hmm. And those that trouble me, they rejoice when I move. Watch this. Lest my enemy do what? Say, uh -huh. I have prevailed against them. Uh -huh. And those that trouble me, rejoice uh -huh. when I am moved. Why? Because I'm blind. What does it mean by being blind? Not being able to see. What you are dealing with. And the trick of the enemy is to blind you. So you can't see. So you have eyes. But you can't see what you're dealing with. And until you see what you're dealing with, you can never fight the way you ought to fight in order for you to win. Unless you see. The Bible said, watch this, look at me. The Bible said, watch. Say watch. And then what? Pray. Say watch and pray. Do what? Watch and pray. It means that you got to stay awake. Be on the alert. It means have the ability to see. Because unless you see, you can never pray the way you ought to pray. And the reason why folks are praying and I ain't getting results is because bishop, they are praying, but they are not seeing. So without the Holy Spirit and without revelation, that's what the Bible says, watch and pray. Because if you are watching, you will see things that will make you pray. Oh, you didn't hear me. You didn't hear me. The reason why folks don't come to prayer meeting and take prayer for granted is because they don't see anything. 
But if you really have eyes to see what's going on in the spirit and what's going on with your kids and what is happening around you and in your community, to your friends, to your loved ones, and what the enemy has devised against your family and your loved ones, nobody's going to tell you to come to prayer meeting. You will get up yourself and be on your knees and pray. Watch and pray. Lest you enter into what? Temptation. It means that the enemy have set you up. And the only way you can stop the setup is for you to see. And you can't see when you don't watch. Somebody say sensitivity. Say it again. Say sensitivity. One more time. Paul was walking and this lady came around and said, hey, these are the men of God that preach the word of God and lead us to salvation. And kept on doing that, praising them. And what the, the lady was saying was true. But it was a spirit of divination that was speaking. And Paul picked it in the spirit and said, you unclean fast, we come out of it. And there are demons sitting in the pews, right in church, praising with us. And we can't even tell. Why? Because we are blind. We have eyes, but we can't see in the spirit. And that's why David said, lighten down my eyes, lest I sleep the sleep of death. There are folks sleeping with the snake, sleeping with the enemy. And can't see it, can't tell, because you are blind. Hear me? Revival don't come as a result of good preaching and good teaching. Are you hearing me? Revival is when God comes to town. And God comes to town in response to what I call memorial prayers. The Bible said Cornelius gave and gave and prayed and prayed until his giving and his prayers became memorial before God. And an angel came in response to the prayers. Watch me. Anytime an angel comes on the scene, it is in response to prayer. Anytime God comes to town, it's in response to prayer. And if we want God to come to town for the devil to leave town, it is time for somebody to pay the price. Are you hearing me, somebody? Say yes. Watch this. Nothing absolutely happens until somebody prays. I'm here to tell you. You better hear me. You can believe as much, as long as you want to believe. But unless you begin to put your belief into action by praying to the God in whom you believe, nothing absolutely happens until we pray. Watch this. In Acts the 16th chapter, reading from the 20th verse, okay? Can I talk to you? Give me two minutes and I'll let you go home. Okay? Watch this. Look at Acts the 16th chapter. Reading from the 20 feet first. Look at something there. Uh huh. And at midnight, uh huh, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises. Now, watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this. Look at me. Watch this. Do you realize when they sang praises? When was the praises sung? No. Good. When was the praises sung? Somebody talk to me. When was the praises sung? When was the praises sung? Now watch this. Through praise. Through praise is the response of an answer to prayer. They prayed. Then they sang praises and something happened. Watch it. See what happened. And suddenly there was a great earthquake so that the foundations of the prison were shaken 
And immediately all the doors were open, and everyone's mouths were loose. And the keeper of the prison awakened out of his sleep and seeing the prison doors open. Stop there. Look at me. Look at me. At midnight, they prayed at midnight. Say at midnight. You know why they prayed at midnight and not at 10, not at 11? Because midnight is the dawning of a new day. Midnight is when decisions are made for the coming day. The bridegroom came at midnight. You remember the two women that took their son to Solomon? Listen to what the, the, the other woman said. She said, when... I slept at midnight. He rose up, she rose up, and she exchanged her dead child with my living child at midnight. So at midnight, there is exchange of life and death. And in the book of Job, he said they die at midnight. We'll deal with that some other time. But watch this. Look at me. Watch this. They prayed at midnight and they prayed. And there was what? And immediately, an earthquake. The foundations were shaken. The doors were open. Everybody's chain was what? Loose. Watch this. Please hear me. I want you to listen to me. You're my people. And I, I love you. And I travel and I preach in every major church in this country. And I'm telling you something. In the next five years, churches that will not go back to prayer will begin to lose it. You better hear me. There are folks who are doing big things without prayer and all they are doing is using systems through the American dreams and all these systems and PR and media and everything. I'm telling you, in the next five years, if we don't go back to prayer and deploy the Holy Ghost for revelation, they are going to wither. You won't hear of them anymore. Mark it. Because the church is not corporate America. The church is a spiritual movement. It's a spiritual institution. And when we stop doing what made us who we are, just because we think we have arrived, we are in big trouble. You can't stop doing what made you great because you become great. You're going to diminish. If you destroy the foundation on which the building is standing, the whole building is going to come down. Watch this. The only reason why there was an immediately, an earthquake, foundation shaking, prison doors open, everybody changed loose was because of what they did at midnight. So all those things that took place, ladies and gentlemen, was in response to the midnight prayers. Is anybody hearing me? No, you're not hearing me. You want me to hoop? Come on, I can hoop. Are you hearing me, somebody? I'm just sick and tired of people coming to church and dancing and getting all happy and playing the drums and everything and then going back the same way and not getting any testimony, no change, no miracles, just all the time the same, depressed, lonely, grieved, sorrowful, sad all the time and the devil sitting on folks and they don't know how to fight back. I'm sick and tired of that. I want to see some fighters in the house. I want to see somebody with a testimony. I want to see folks who know how to deal with the devil and know how to deal with loneliness and knows how to deal with depression and know how to deal with grief and with guilt and with lust. Whenever the devil comes, they know how to put up a fight and say, don't even try it. 